Your lips are too small. Your eyebrows are too thick. Your nose is too crooked. Your breasts are too fake. Your butt is too flat. Your hips are too wide. Your legs are too muscular. Your ankles are shapeless. These are just a few of the criticisms I have heard about myself since I was a little girl that have shaped my self-image and what I believe about myself. And the sad part is, I know that I'm not alone. As women, we are constantly looking at other women and thinking about how we measure up in comparison because our culture has conditioned us to look at examples of what we should look like, causing us to tie our self-worth to our outer appearance. We waste so much time, energy, and money on meaningless things like excessive makeup, gimmicky beauty tools, injectables, plastic surgery, and so much more just to feel worthy enough. And as women, we are complaining that we are being objectified by society, but we are objectifying ourselves by constantly modifying the way we look to fit the mold. I have yet to meet a woman who says she is confident and content about every little part of her outer appearance, and it's tragic if you think about it. I am making this video because I am a mother of a little girl who I want to raise into a self-assured, confident woman who loves and accepts herself for who she is on the inside and outside. I want to empower her and anyone who watches this video. I want to share my journey and life experiences within this beauty industry so that you can learn from my struggles and see how we are all being made to feel ugly and worthless. It is all part of the patriarchy trying to control our divine feminine power. And by playing into this game, we we are giving up our sacred power little by little. Beauty is not one size fits all. So why are we molding ourselves to fit the same image our society has constructed for us? And why are most of these unrealistic standards targeting women and young girls? This is not a coincidence. I know that making this video is going to bring up a lot of heated conversation and I know that I will get a lot of hate because I am a privileged white woman. I am aware of this privilege, but I also want to kindly ask that you don't dismiss my experiences. I want to use my voice and my privilege to help as many women as I can to feel seen, heard, and represented. We are much more powerful when we unite and push for change together. I am so passionate about this conversation because the beauty industry has gone too far and it's causing us to reject ourselves, loathe our bodies, and succumb to the endless cycle of body manipulation and morphism. This has to stop. Before I get into all of the lies we are told about beauty from the time that we are impressionable young children, I want to make one thing very clear. I am not shaming anyone that does anything to change the way they look so that they can feel more confident in their own skin. In fact, I have dabbled with my fair share of beauty treatments over the years, such as Botox fillers and less invasive beauty enhancements, such as full coverage makeup, fake eyelashes, and scary vampire facials. I don't think there is anything wrong with doing these things as long as you are doing them mindfully and with the right intentions. Do them for you. Do them because you want to enhance and celebrate the natural features that you were born with, not because you were trying to look like someone else or you want to keep up with that friend who is constantly changing her appearance for all the wrong reasons and making you feel bad about yourself. Our society has crossed many lines with normalizing Botox, fillers, and even plastic surgery. Everyone wants bigger lips, bigger breasts, perfectly straight noses, smaller waists, higher cheekbones. Everyone is starting to look the same. And where do we draw the line? 
Why is no one asking any questions? And why is this the new standard of beauty? And what's even more concerning is that these beauty enhancements are becoming more and more prevalent with younger girls. Boys too, but let's be honest, most of the pressure is being placed on young, impressionable girls and it terrifies me. Our children are now watching reality TV and beauty gurus on YouTube and seeing these unrealistic standards of beauty all over social media digital ads, influencer marketing, magazines, films, blog posts, and so much more. And they think this is what they are supposed to aspire to. Morphing their precious little faces and bodies until they are completely unrecognizable. Why is it that they don't feel good enough and beautiful just as they are? Why is it that the first thing we focus on when we look at ourselves in the mirror is all of our imperfections instead of our beauty, our stretch marks, our cellulite, are wrinkles and sagging skin. Why do I still have insecurities about how I look as a grown woman? The answers to these questions can be found in our childhood and in the culture we have been raised in. We have been programmed to want to look a certain way because our society tells us this is how we get attention, acceptance, admiration, and respect. But this is all a lie. We need to do a lot of inner work and self-reflection to rewire our brains, to change these unrealistic standards in our minds so we can break free and love and accept ourselves for who we are at our core. We need to teach our children to love and accept themselves for who they are through our own actions. How can we tell our children that they are beautiful and perfect just the way they are and how much they look just like us one moment? and then break ourselves down when we look at ourselves in the mirror the next. What kind of message do you think we are sending our children by doing this? I am going to lay it all out for you so that you can see how we have been brainwashed into believing we are not beautiful enough and help you harness your true inner and outer beauty. Now that I have your attention, let's talk about the lies the beauty industry has been telling us to make us feel ugly and worthless. The blonde, blue-eyed, fair-skinned woman. Growing up in the 90s as a young, impressionable little girl, I saw this idealized woman everywhere I looked. From magazines, billboards, and beauty ad campaigns, this woman was constantly telling me I am not good enough because I didn't look like her. I had dark brown, coarse, wavy hair and brown eyes, and I was an awkward, introverted little girl who felt like she didn't fit in. I thought that if I changed my appearance to look more like that girl, I would feel more seen and accepted. So one day I went to the drugstore during my school lunch break and I box dyed my hair blonde. Shortly after, I convinced my parents to let me get blue contact lenses because my brown eyes made me feel ugly. I transformed myself to look like the girl that our society had so blatantly idealized before I even graduated from elementary school. It didn't help that my two best friends at the time were gorgeous, one with natural ginger hair and piercing blue eyes, and the other with natural blonde hair and green eyes. Even though I never admitted it, I always felt like the ugly duckling in the group. Some 20-ish years later, I have learned to love and accept my natural hair color and eye color that I was born with. I am older and wiser and thankfully I now understand that I was trying to live up to a toxic portrayal of what a woman should look like and not what she actually looks like in the real world. The beauty industry has come a long way in the last 20 years, but there is still a lot of work to be done. In some cultures, it is still a standard to have fair skin and they even normalize using skin bleaching creams such as Fair and Lovely to whiten their complexions from childhood. Beauty brands are still limited with their makeup formulations that enhance the features of different skin, hair, and eye colors. The fashion and entertainment industries are still still predominantly Caucasian men and women that fit a certain look and fail to represent visible minorities in a realistic way that allows regular people to see themselves in these models or characters. I hope that our social norms will continue to change and we can get to a point where everyone feels seen and heard. The perfect woman. 
When I was around 14 years old, I convinced my mother I wanted to get into modeling. For me, this choice stemmed from the need to build my confidence by doing something that I thought would make people notice me. But in reality, the modeling industry broke me apart and left me feeling less confident about myself and my body than I ever did before. I remember attending one particular agency call where the man interviewing me was looking me up and down like a piece of meat and then proceeded to tell me that I was borderline too short and too curvy to be a model. For the record, I was five foot nine and at the time weighed 140 pounds, which is a perfectly healthy weight and height for a young developing woman. He told me that if I wanted to have a chance to succeed in the industry, I needed to start walking at least four kilometers a day and survive on 800 calories. He told me I could come back after I lost 20 pounds and we can go from there. This advice came from a man that represented one of the biggest and most successful modeling agencies in the world. Of course I took his advice to heart. How could I not? After all, he was the expert and I was just the child. It makes me sad just thinking about how I let this one person get into my head and how many other young girls he broke too. To say that I left that meeting with my heart in my stomach and feeling completely broken and defeated is an understatement. I spent the next 15 years or so having a love-hate relationship with my body because of this one insensitive man's distorted opinion and his inability to filter himself to a young, impressionable teenage girl. Shame on him and shame on this agency for hiring and keeping such monsters in their company. The idealized woman in our Culture has come a long way from the white skinned blonde with blue eyes and thin framed image we were shown over and over again for years. But today, the standards have changed to perfecting every feature of a woman's face and body. We have become a culture obsessed with perfection. We admire perky breasts, round bottoms, tiny waists, and juicy lips. In my opinion, it is an even more unrealistic beauty standard than before because now we are focusing in on every feature on a woman. We are still objectifying the woman's body by creating this idealized image to aspire to, especially with the unwavering rise in diets, exercise programs, plastic surgery, meal plans, and overwhelming amount of photoshopped and filtered images being blasted all over social media. It is so easy to obsess about how we look if our body doesn't look like the body that our society puts on a pedestal. I wish I could go back and talk to myself as a little girl and tell her she is good enough just the way she is. I know I can't do that, but I can give my daughter the tools she needs so that she is prepared to deal with what's to come during her impressionable years. I'm going to tell her that real women come in all shapes and sizes. She could be skinny or curvy, voluptuous or short, tall or athletic, and all of these forms are equally beautiful in their own right. And most importantly, I'm going to show her how to love herself through my own actions. I'm done with focusing in on my imperfections. And whenever I have the opportunity to look at my own reflection in the mirror with my daughter observing, I'm going to show her how I practice self-love and acceptance so that she can have the gift of doing the same for herself. There is no such thing as a perfect body. There is only a healthy body and an unhealthy body. Not accepting ourselves is not accepting our ancestors, our lineage, and where we came from. It is subconsciously accepting that what society is saying about what we should look like is true. A woman's skin should show no flaws or signs of aging. If you are a woman with fine lines, wrinkles, sagging skin, stretch marks, body hair, acne, or cellulite, you are made to believe that there is something you need to fix and yet men don't seem to have these same standards. Why is that? Why is most of the pressure to look a certain way put on us? Our fine lines and wrinkles are a sign that we have lived and loved. Our cellulite is inherently part of our beauty as women and a sign of health and fertility. Our stretch marks are evidence of our growth and evolution. So why are we so quick to dismiss these signs of a life well lived? Why can't we learn to love and embrace our imperfections and see them as perfect? 
imperfections and celebrate each other as we are. I want to clarify, I am not saying we should let ourselves go and not take care of our outer appearance. I'm simply suggesting that we not be so quick to follow the latest beauty trends and do what society is telling us we should do to feel beautiful. If you love your wrinkles and don't want to inject your face with Botox every few months, don't do it. If you love your natural hair color and texture as it is, celebrate it. It's about becoming more mindful and intentional with the decisions you are making and making these decisions for you. I'm going to be completely transparent and tell you exactly what I do for my beauty routine and self-care because honesty is one of the ways we can support and uplift each other by being open, honest, and not gatekeeping. I'm also I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't do anything because I will tell you that in the past I did certain things because I was influenced by society. Present Nikki only does things that feel aligned with what I want to do and whatever I choose to do has been given a lot of time and self-reflection to make sure I'm doing those things for all the right reasons. So here's what I do as a grown woman who is not influenced by what society tells her to do. I do a treatment called lip blushing once every two to three years and it's a non-invasive beauty treatment that enhances the natural shape of my lips and saves me time every day because I don't need to apply anything to my lips if I don't want to. Most days I just swipe on a clear lip balm or gloss and that's it. And as a busy mom of two little ones, low maintenance beauty is my jam. So if you want to know more about what lip blushing is and who I trust with this treatment, you can check out my lip blush highlight on my Instagram. I do nano brows once every two to three years and this is another low maintenance, non-invasive beauty treatment I started doing that enhances my natural eyebrows and has saved me so much time. I wanted to embrace my natural fullness and shape from when I was a young girl before I plucked, waxed, and tweezed the crap out of them and it had literally changed my entire face. Again, if you want more information on this treatment and who I go to in Toronto, you can check out my nano brows highlight on my Instagram. I do Botox once every four months with the exception of when I'm pregnant or breastfeeding. Now I know I'm probably going to get a lot of resistance on this one, but I'm just being real. And the main reason I get Botox is to relax my overactive facial muscles. I really don't care about having fine lines or wrinkles. And personally, I think it's a sign of a life well lived, but for me having a extremely overactive facial muscles has caused me to get really bad headaches in the past and Botox is the only thing that keeps them at bay for long periods of time. This is a very personal decision that I have made that works for me and I'm telling you this because I want you to ask yourself these questions before you decide to get a beauty treatment, invasive or not. I do a treatment on my hair called Pro Addiction once every six months and this is a natural hair treatment I've been getting over the last year or so to help relax my coarse and frizzy hair. It also made my hair a lot more manageable and so much healthier. I literally don't style my hair anymore. And if I do style it, it's very, very minimal. I talked about this beauty treatment in past videos and on my Instagram, so I won't go into too much detail about it here, but this is another example of a beauty treatment I do to enhance my natural texture and save me time. I will also leave all the details for the beauty masters I go to for for my treatments in the description box of this video. I get a Russian manicure with builder gel once a month and in my opinion nothing compares to a Russian manicure. This beauty treatment has another name now for obvious reasons but without getting too political it is a technique in which a nail master gently cleans the nail cuticles in such a way that it is healthier, safer, and far longer lasting than any other nail technique I have tried. I have one nail master that I love and and trust and she has been doing my nails for the last two years and I will also leave her info in the description box. Taking care of my skin is something that I try to do on a daily basis and as a grown woman my skincare routine has become a lot more refined but so much more effective than ever before. I don't have time for a gimmicky 10-step skincare routine like I used to and I definitely don't have time for excessive skincare tools. My skincare routine is three simple steps, cleanse, 
tone and moisturize and sometimes if I have the time I use my gua sha to sculpt my skin and reduce any inflammation and puffiness. The products I use are based on my skin type and skin concerns so I'm not going to go into detail as to what I use. What's more important than using what someone else is using is knowing your own skin and what works for it. This takes time and really learning to love your skin and adapt to its needs based on your environment and hormone changes as a woman, not by buying the first thing your favorite beauty influencer tells you to buy. Minimal makeup is something that I apply about twice a week, depending on my work schedule or if I have any events that I'm getting ready for. The old Nikki used to feel very insecure about leaving the house without a full face of makeup and full coverage foundation, but the new Nikki embraces all of her freckles, sunspots, birthmarks, and imperfections because that's what makes me real. And when I do wear makeup, I have a very, very minimal approach with very few items and focus on just enhancing the natural features I was born with instead of trying to conceal everything, cover everything up, and manipulate my face. A mother should bounce back quickly and always be perfectly put together. I used to look at myself in the mirror and deconstruct everything I didn't like about myself. My crooked angled nose, my bushy eyebrows, my big ears, my wide hips, my muscular legs, and my shapeless ankles. It wasn't until I birthed my daughter when I was 29 years old that I realized I cannot go on like this anymore. I need to set a better example for her and teach her that our beauty comes from the inside and it radiates from the totality of our body parts regardless if they are considered perfect or imperfect perfect based on society standards. Another thing I realized since becoming a mother is the pressure to bounce back so quickly after giving birth. Our society shames women and their bodies for not looking a certain way after creating life and bringing a human into this world and it makes me so sad that this is the world we live in. How about focusing on the beautiful sacrifices we have made to bring life into this world? How about celebrating this incredible superpower we have as women and giving women the time and the space to bounce back or not bounce back at their own pace. Mothers are the ones who shape and nurture our future's generation and can help change the world for the better. And we are shifting their focus from making this profound impact to focusing on how they look. What is wrong with this picture? Our society has created this picture perfect image of the ideal woman. The problem is this ideal woman looks nothing like the majority of the women on this planet. There are so many different shapes and sizes and characteristics of a woman's face and body and features that are severely misrepresented in our culture. Our true power as women and our ability to create life, to nourish a developing infant from our sacred breasts has been broken down and objectified to feed the needs and wants of the patriarchy. It is meant to break us down to the sum of our body parts and shift our focus away from our true essence and purpose as the powerful women that we are. We are essentially being pinned against each other without even realizing it. When I look at myself in the mirror now after becoming a mother, I still see imperfections, but I choose to love and accept myself for what my body has done for me. My wider hips carry two beautiful, healthy babies to term, and they have helped me bring them into this world. My breasts have nourished them from the day they were born until they were each 18 months old. This is a superpower that is truly unique and that I will forever be grateful for. It is something that no one can take away from me. It has made me look at my body from a different perspective and have a completely different love and appreciation for it than I ever have in my entire life. The message I hope to convey through this video is to love and accept yourself for everything you already are. Focus less on how others perceive you and more on how you feel about yourself and in your body. Be honest with yourself and only do what makes you 
happy. Take time to reflect and look inwards, to ask yourself why you feel the way you feel and if seeking approval is really going to make you feel better about yourself because I can promise you it won't. There is nothing wrong with taking care of yourself, grooming yourself and wanting to look and feel like the best version of yourself, but the power lies in doing it for you because it's what you want to do and not because you were influenced by something or someone. Beauty is not measured by what you see in the reflection of your mirror. Beauty can only come from within. Your kindness, your character, how you treat yourself and the others around you, that is real beauty. Our differences and our imperfections are what make us uniquely beautiful just as we are. Our stories and experiences are what shape and mold us. You can live your entire life trying to perfect your outer appearance to the world, but none of it will matter if you abandon your true authentic self behind the mask. What you feed your mind, body, and soul on a daily basis and how you radiate love and light to the people around you is far more beautiful than what you look like on the outside. Let's change the paradigm and normalize real beauty in all of its forms. Let's focus on the integrity and character of people and how they make us feel instead of what they look like. Let's raise our children to love and accept not only themselves, but others around them. In order to change our world, we need to start from changing ourselves from within. If you enjoyed this video, I think you will enjoy this one too, where I talk about the biggest regrets in my life. It would also mean a lot to me if you would consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and letting me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one.